This is Behind the Kick. All right, welcome back to Behind the Kit. This is Doug Miola. I hope that everyone is having a fantastic weekend so far. Joe has another great show on deck for us, so looking forward to another night of great drums and drumming conversation. So last week I responded to a question that we received from one of the Around the Kit listeners who wanted to know what bass drum pedal she should look into. She said that she plays mostly rock and metal, and she was interested in the direct drive pedals. So last week I talked about the various bass drum pedal drives, the chain driven, the direct and belt or strap driven pedals. Tonight I'm going to talk about some of the other pedal options to consider, the cams and the footboards. So the pedal cams are the key component that connect the drive to the beater and the pedal drive to the footboard. The common standard for pedal cams for many years has always been the linear cam, which simply means that the cam offers an even, consistent radius from the beginning to the end of your foot stroke. A good example of this is the Sonar Perfect Balance pedal that is designed with a round cam. Most direct drive pedals are also designed with linear cams. The other type is the offset type of cam. These cams work off of a different distribution of leverage. Typically, offset cams have an oblong kidney bean or nautilus shape to them and are designed to accelerate the beater as it gets closer to the point of contact with the drum. Think of a roller coaster climbing all the way up to its highest point. When it reaches the top of the slope, it then rapidly descends or moves forward. This is what is happening with the offset cams. As your foot stroke reaches contact with the drum, you experience more speed and power from the forward stroke. Many pedals on the market now offer interchangeable cams that allow the drummer to customize their setups with linear and or offset cams based on their needs and preferences for their pedals. As far as pedal footboards go, we have lots of choices there too. As physics dictates when we play on any pedal, the further up on the pedal we play, apply our foot, the longer it will take for the beater to strike the drum head. As we bring our foot down on the pedal footboard, closer to the bottom, the beater strike to drum head contact gets quicker. As we know, there are tons of footboard concepts, lengths, and designs. The traditional footboards, many that resemble the basic shape of a footprint, typically have a hinged heel plate or base that anchors the pedal and doesn't move when the pedal moves. Long footboards or long boards, like the well-known axis pedals, come in a variety of increased lengths and they are made without tr the traditional heel plates, so the entire surface of the pedal footboard becomes a playable area. Some drummers that incorporate various techniques to increase their speed and ability often prefer the longer pedal uh, boards. Once again, I can't stress enough that there is no pedal that is quote unquote the best. Like most gear, it is very subjective based on our taste, needs, and our personal preferences. We need to really go out and try the pedals that we are interested in and see how they feel. This is the best way for us to make our choice. Thanks again to everyone who has contacted us with questions. If you have an inquiry for us at Behind the Kit, please send us an email or a message. We would love to discuss it on the show. You can also reach me on Facebook at Doug Miola's Drum Spot or at my website, DougMiola.com. Thanks again for listening, everyone. Enjoy the rest of tonight's show. Have a great week. Keep on drumming, and I'll see you next week on Behind the Kit.